Welcome back, health accumulators. I hope you are accumulating health. Today, we're talking about metabolism and the fact that as we age, it can seem like our metabolism is slowing down. But in reality, most studies show our metabolism is not slowing down. What's happening is we're beginning to reap the uh, potentially benefits or, or lack thereof. Um, we're reaping the fruit of the life, of the inputs, the information, the food, the exercise, the strength training the mindset, the thinking process, the relationships, the environment, we're reaping the fruit of you know, the last 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years of our life. And so more than metabolism, it is the seeds we've been placed in our life and that beginning to manifest now, just like you plant seeds in the garden and it, you don't notice anything right now when you put them in, in, the, in, the, gar, in, the, in the soil. But then, you know, a month later, two months later, three months later, here they come, and the seeds you put in is the fruit, the vegetable matter, the trees that come out. Not just some random tree doesn't just show up where you put apple seeds, right? So often patients will say, man, and you may even say to yourself, I've been doing the same thing, eating the same things, and now look, I have just like this belly, my arms are sagging, I have acid reflux, my blood sugar is out of control. My cholesterol is high. My bones are brittle. I understand why. I've been doing the same thing for all these years. I've never had these issues before. So for years and even decades, the marvelousness of our body has been compensating for our sleep, stress, activities, food inputs. Even our choice of, you know, say if you take birth control or you do anabolic steroids in your 20s or you have breast implants or you're sleeping around or... You're giving into fear all the time or worry, or you lift weights, you know, with terrible form. The body is continually compensating over and over and over. You know, it's pulling resources from one tissue to support the most necessary processes for sustaining life. Doesn't mean that we aren't having consequences from our actions for good or bad. We are having consequences. It's just that for so long, the body figures out ways around that in its marvelousness. So the fact is that metabolic dysfunction does increase with age, even as metabolic rate remains the same. And when I say metabolic dysfunction, I'm speaking to the inability of an aging body to process and regenerate tissue, you know, with that breathtaking efficiency it did in our youth. Unfortunately, you know, this metabolic dysfunction it slows cellular detox processes. It promotes low-grade inflammation, which leads to things like insulin resistance, higher blood pressure, hormone receptor activity decreasing. You know, and when that happens, we create more muscle loss, more fat accumulation, more bone loss. This is where more wrinkles show up, that, that, those brittle bones, smell and taste sensitivity decrease. So then we want more sugary foods because they sound more pleasant consuming vegetables and meat, it becomes more challenging because we gotta put all this effort in to chew through them. Not only, not, not to mention the preparation. And then, you know, aches and pains, they, they decrease the volume of movement we get in during the day. The loss of muscle mass means each muscle cell has to work that much harder to move the same amount of skeletal muscle around, skeletal structure around, which then increases how quickly we become fatigued and we want to sit around even more. You know, recovery from illness is slower, fat around the waist is greater, arms are sagging even further. All of this is metabolic dysfunction manifesting, and nobody wants that. So thankfully, we can indeed act against this process. But I'll tell you, from many, many patient experiences, it will take conscious effort going against what are your you know your senses your desires you know just like it's accumulative the micro damage over decades at least to cellular metabolic dysfunction you know things like the the artificial creamers in your coffee in the morning just a little bit right 30, 30 65 days a year though adds up the vegetable oils in your favorite dressing the the bag of chips with lunch just five days a week you know 20 20 days a month or like the person last month who said they go to Taco Bell twice a week, eight times a month, year after year. 
or you know the two hours of TV watching each night instead of going out and you know working in the yard, fumbling around, walking around, cleaning cleaning stuff up, going for a walk. All these micro choices they just keep adding up. You know the bowl of ice cream each night, the bowl of popcorn each night, and they can in the end impact our quantity and quality of life, especially our quality of life. So when compounded over and over. They create a potential scenario for sick mitochondria, sick cell membranes, rigid cell membranes, you know, that don't communicate optimally. And a lack, a lack in communication of our cell membranes is a recipe for aging. I say all that to say, it won't just be one day or one food decision. It will be consistently going against the grain, you know, of societal tendencies that produce the hormone sensitivity once again that reverses the insulin resistance, that repairs DNA, that creates the efficient clearance of white fat and, 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 and the corresponding muscle growth, that makes those submembranes nice and pliable instead of so rigid. All right, if you haven't already subscribed, better subscribe to Dear Homeless Channel so you can have the best in health accumulation opportunity every single week. Now, I got three actions that you can take that I think have greatest value across the board that I've seen clinically if you want to make sure your aging is as graceful as possible. The first one is intermittent fasting. And when I say intermittent fasting, I'm not talking about strict, you know, 16 hours a day, fast every single day, eight hours feasting. I have found that not to be as valuable for patients. What I do find valuable is having, you know, some days that are more aggressive, some days that are less aggressive. But I'd be like, so some days are 18 hours of fasting, some days, sometimes I do 24 hours of fasting. Other days it's 12 hours of fasting. And, and finding, okay, where is the balance for me? You know, where is the, the amount of fasting that doesn't lead to like em, kind of emotional stress and duress and relational stress, but still permits me to have those fasting windows to uh, get those new stem cells created, to, to clear my body of those old used up cells that the body would love to clear, but it just doesn't have the opportunity because food keeps coming in. Number two is strength training. Yes building muscle. This cannot be overstated. This is your number one biological marker of aging, your number one bio biological marker of me metabolic activity, build muscle density. This doesn't mean you need to, you know, go lift super heavy weights all the time and put yourself in potential predicaments of injuring yourself performing, you know, one rep maxes. This just means you showing consistency, applying resistance to your back, your chest, your shoulders, your arms, legs, multiple times per week in a manner that is greater than your daily living resistance. So if you're buzzing around all day long, awesome. But your body will get so used to buzzing around all day long that it, you know, you're not, you're not building more muscle tissue. You're not, you're not repairing bone. You're not causing bone density to increase by your buzzing. So you need something to pull on those bones to force your bones, to turn themselves over, to make themselves dense. You need something to pull on those muscle tissues to force them to regenerate and repair themselves to increase their strength. And consider this, just 12 days of an exercise program increase muscle levels of these youthful hormones like DHEA and free testosterone. Just 12 days. I didn't say 12 months, literally 12 days. And there's another study that showed just 12 weeks of yoga increased growth hormone and DHA levels in elderly men and women. Just yoga. This isn't, you know, high intensity interval training. This isn't cross workouts. This isn't slamming weights. This is yoga, greatly increasing life building tissue and hormone levels. The key factor is consistency. Got to show up over and over again. All right. Number three, we got to tighten up our food inputs. That means more protein, more fruit, more vegetables as the capacity to metabolize sugars, efficiently starts to go down with age, so does our need to shift our energy sources. So increasing those antioxidant, high antioxidant foods, you know, like our fruits and vegetables, you know, the, the colors, the pigments, those polyphenols, these foods literally are youthfulness entering, flooding our being. They're turning off aging signals. So juice is not what we're talking about here. We want the whole pieces of fruit. You know, where bread used to be, pastas, white rices, cereals, where those once were, we really need, want to have things like meat, 
purple potatoes, sweet potatoes, black rice, eggs, avocados, fruits, vegetables. We want that kind of matter coming into ourselves. And you say, well, why not do it now? I agree hundred percent. Why not do it now before you're 60 or 70 or 80? It's going to make those years so much more enjoyable when you're not dealing with arthritis brought on by the food inputs you've been putting in your body. And say you're doing all these things and you feel like, you know what, I'm still falling behind in, in my metabolism. Then you may want to look into things like whey protein, essential amino acid therapy, berberine, that, that herbal extract. And those would be, you know, just three kind of off the top minimums, but berberine, you know, has been shown to improve inflammatory status by its effect on blood sugar regulation and mitochondrial function. Those mitochondria, you know, those are the energizers of your cells. We, we, we lose them as we age. And so we want, it's nice to do things that will help us keep them on board. Lifting weights is a great way to maintain great mitochondrial function, but berberine as an addition is something else that, to consider. And then essential amino acids. Essential amino acids taken in the right ratio, you know, with, with just a glass of water mixed in, those can stimulate muscle protein synthesis. They can reverse the decline in metabolism and the weakness that's associated with aging. And then number three is goat whey protein. It's literally one of my favorites. I talk about it all the time, but especially for the postmenopausal women and guys who are 50, I'm only 42, but, but, but I still use it. Because studies indicate that whey protein supplementation, it basically wages war against sarcopenia. And sarcopenia is that, that loss of healthy muscle tissue that occurs with aging. Uh, whey protein concentrates can also increase glutathione levels, our master antioxidant, every cell in our entire body. In fact, I think they're probably the, one of the best whole food ways, real food ways of raising glutathione without having to take, you know, say N acetylcysteine or, or some, some supplement milk thistle. So if you want to increase your ability to endure physical stressors, then yeah, I think go whey protein, essential amino acids, those are fantastic um, resources. There's no need to wait until you're 40, until you're 50, until you're 60, until you're 70 to go all in on a little intermittent fasting schedule, to go all in on a uh, whole real rich food schedule, to go all in on strength training. You know, get these things, accumulate them, acu accumulate times and, uh, you know, uh, routines. So these slowly just become a part of who you are. Get your family involved, get your wife involved, get your husband involved. I know it's challenging, but you are going to want to do it. You're gonna be so grateful you did it with each passing decade of life, those seeds are going to bear fruit. And you want it to bear fruit that is life-giving, that demonstrates health accumulation. All right, Dr. Matt, hope it was helpful for you. Like, subscribe, send to your friends. Sharing is caring, folks. All right, I'll talk to you guys later.